Hey, No-Till Nuts, I'm the Rascal Farmer. Welcome back to the No-Till Lab. It's been two weeks. Let's check out the main greenhouse. I think while we were gone, somebody came in here and put different plants in here. They blew up. Second trellis is installed on some of the spots, but they got big. We will come down here in a minute and we will check these out fully. Everything is really wet. We had a serious dew last night. The sun is just coming out, but you can see I'm wearing a hoodie because it's 57 degrees and it is 77% humidity. So we have been having some humid temps, or some humid temps, some humid nights with some cool nights and some warm days up into the low 80s. And that is perfect weather for powdery mildew. Cherry gasms blown up over the top, about seven foot tall now. Everything is in full flower. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I thought I was going to be telling you a story of death and destruction. Because, you know, people have been... People have been yapping at me since I started doing this powdery mildew. You gotta run new beans, you gotta run new seeds. Well, you know what? I did run new seeds, and I ran that uh, Catalina wine mixer, or the Bartholomew, whichever you wanna call it, and I ran the Scarlet Queen. And you can already see there is some severe yellowing, and I thought I was gonna be telling you a story of me taking that blade and chopping this whole entire greenhouse down because it is completely, completely overrun by powdery mildew. Bad. Bad. One of the worst cases. Unfortunately, the buds look like they were going to do fantastic, but these plants are going to die. Let me unlock this and we'll get in there and we'll take a brief look at it. It scares the shit out of me to even go in there. But we'll just take a brief look at it and I'll show you how bad it is and then I'll tell you what I'm going to do instead of chopping it down. Yeah, it's bad in here. Bartholomew 1. Buds are looking nice too. Unfortunately... This plant is dying. Number two in the back. And then the Scarlet Queens. Scarlet Queen one. Nice plant. The one thing I can tell you about both of these strains that I like is I like the bud development so far. That's got a really, really nice cola. That would have stacked in there real nice. This Scarlet Queen is, is fantastic. But it's bad. Bad, bad, bad. So, what am I going to do? Well, months ago, I won that Optic Foliar uh, Bud Shot Contest on the Dew Grow Show, and two of the products were Transport and Attack. And Attack is designed for PM. This dog is going nuts. You'll see her in the background. She is chasing down yellow jackets. I don't know where she disturbed them, but they've stung her probably about four or five times, and she's snapping after them like she's trying to protect me from them. And it's kind of hilarious. So if you see her dart by, and look at her. She is hunting bees. Psycho dog. Digs holes, burrows in the ground, hunts bees. Killed a mole the other day. Dug him right up out of the ground. Anyway, optic foliar. So I won this contest. I was talking with, uh, chatting with Dinesh from optic foliar. I had tried this a couple times down in the, uh, the last run that I had, um, I believe it was the run with the Cherry Gasm, the Lemon Stilton, and the Jelly Bean. And I ran it then, and I didn't have really good luck, but I had since talked with Dinesh, and he said, you know, even though it says, you know, 7.5 milliliters of this one and 5 milliliters of that one, you can use up to 10. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix 10 milliliters per liter of each. I'm going to put it in that spray bottle and I am going to go spray that upper greenhouse. I don't plan on smoking any of those buds, but it would be nice to know seeing how I have got PM in the main greenhouse and I'm going to be doing some breeding if I can at least hold back this PM so that I can get something to finish if it actually comes to that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but this will, should definitely kill the surface PM and I would need to do that. If I was going to go in there and chop those down, can you imagine trying to chop those stupid things down with all that PM on them? Yeah, it would be madness. So I'm going to mix this up. Um, and uh, we're going to see if this works. And if it doesn't work and the PM pops right back up on the leaves, then probably what I will do is hose them down with neem. That will kill the PM on the surface and at least coat it so that when I chop it, I don't blow spores all over the place. So that is the plan of attack in the upper greenhouse. Totally disappointing. Um, but... Uh, we're moving forward. We've got a breeding project to do. It involves breeding for powdery mildew resistance and it does require that you have infected plants. And Jesus God, I've got infected plants. So let's see what we can do with this optic foliar and uh, we'll get a little review going. I know this is asking a lot of this stuff. Um, that PM is horrible. So, all right, let's go see if we can't kill the PM that cannot be killed. All right, so the plan of attack is I'm going to hit them with this sprayer. I'm going to spray the front of these. I'm going to come around from the back side and spray in the back. And I'm going to pray to God that I don't have to actually get in there because I haven't actually been in there in three days. I do not want to get this on me and spread this anywhere else, especially in the indoor setup where the clones have rooted and they're down in the veg tent and I've got them sitting with the ozone generator and they are making sure that they uh, no PM pops up they're kind of down there in a quarantine so I'm gonna spray this I'm probably gonna put down this phone just so I can do this with two hands and uh, then we'll pop this camera back on well the dogs in the door Guarding the door, I figured I'd pop back up here. It's now about 5.30 on Friday night. And I sprayed them with the optic foliar this morning. And, um, well, it laughed at it. Kind of hard, too. Wasn't phased a bit. Might have just pissed it off, I'm not sure. So, what I do? Well, I mixed up some of my labs and my IMO2, and I've made a gallon of that. Um, I'm not concerned about that at all, doing anything to these buds. It's not an oil, so it's not going to melt any trikes. Uh, it's not a chemical. Um, you know, I was kind of concerned about spraying that optic foliar on it because it's not actually a natural product, um, but <sighs> didn't do anything. So I am going to try just for shits and giggles. I'm going to hit them with this labs and then uh, and this IMO2 and see what a little natural biology does hitting this stuff and see if I can't cure it up. Who knows that it by by all, for all intents and purposes, this is the most gentle thing and the most natural thing that I have sprayed on them yet. And in all of these struggles with this PM, I've yet to hit them with an IMO. I didn't have any, so going to be a test. I'm going to pump this up and spray them, and then uh, we'll check back. This looks like hell. Well, you can see that some of the leaves are still wet, and you can see spots of PM down there. And you see PM all over the place. <laughs> the strain that will not be killed.
And it's here as well. Over there. Yeah, it's everywhere. Might have to settle for the last resort and hit them with neem. I know that's going to just completely smother this on the top with the soap and the oil in it. And then take them down. I will make my decision before the weekend's over. Because this is nasty. Hey guys, down here in Clio at the Cup. Standing up in the food court. About to order some Stoneheart pizza and some chicken on a stick. But I'm kind of surprised it is hopping for uh, the second cup of the year. It is windy, it is kind of cool. I'm kind of hungry, so we're going to go head over here and grab something Because last time somebody said something behind the letters <laughs> in the sign. Gotcha busted! <laughs> hey, that was my son Evergreen Hayes. We're hanging out here at the High Dive Cannabis Cup. Guys, back here at the, uh, you know, y'all know that sign. Overlooking the whole cup. Let's get up here where we can take a look. This is probably half the size it was earlier this year. But still, really, really cool. Alright guys, we're gonna go see who we can find. I'm going to kill it all. All. Except for one. And that's what's kind of got me really pissed off about the whole breeding industry and cannabis in general. So, here's the plan, real quick. PM, 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 PM. They are all just as dusted, as bad as you've ever seen them. Um, I hit them with the optic foliar, with the attack. Um... I hit them with labs and IMO twice, has not phased them a bit. The PM is just laughing at me. So I'm going to kill them. I'm going to hit this one with the spray of neem 
and that one, and that one, and that one, and then when the neem, when the neem kills off or covers up and smothers the PM on the surface, I'll feel comfortable enough to cut these out, bag them up, and get them the hell out of here, and then burn them. All right. The only one I am going to keep is that one. And I'm going to try to struggle through an F2 run with it. And I would just as soon cut this out. But when my son smelled this, and I smelled this, it's insane. But everything else is going to die, and I'm going to take some of my Scarlet Queen pollen, and I'm going to F2 this thing. And then I'm just going to focus all my attention on just getting this one to seed. And I don't even care if I have any of it to smoke. I'm just concerned, I'm interested in what comes out of the back side of it. Alright, so we've been to the upper greenhouse. Now we're going to come down and kind of talk about what's going on here. Of course, we've got this breeding project going on here. But this is really the first time the plants have been outdoors in the ground from start to finish so this whole entire greenhouse is kind of like a testing run I got my uh, son on the camera today this is Sunday it's around 1 o'clock and I just want to kind of walk around through this greenhouse and explain what I like what I don't like and what I would change with these strains because pretty much I'm going to go through and do some breeding and then these are going to disappear and we're going to start going from seed. So why don't we just talk about what I got going on. And we'll start right here with the strawberry funk. I love this plant. Indoors, this thing is wonderful. When I flip this thing on to 12 on, 12 off, it grows. It finishes just a few days beyond the others. Outside, it's got kind of the spacing that I like. It's a big plant. It's got a lot of flowering sites. The nugs are going to be hard. They're not going to be overly huge. The problem that this plant has is that it just starts too late. While everybody else wants to flower somewhere, you know, just the other side of, you know, right around 14 hours and 30 minutes, this one, this one likes to wait. And it's probably about around a couple weeks behind the others, as you'll see in a second here with the Velvet Hammer. And that's just going to mean that it's going to start going too late, the end of October, the beginning of November. So we're going to kind of play this one out, but that's what I would change with this one. Everything else I like. It's really, really strawberry, Laffy Taffy. Um, after about a month in the jar, this thing turns into this really funky, feedy really nasty oh my god did I really smell that kind of profile and I really like it it's really strong but it's just not gonna do well out here where I expect it to grow so that's something that I hope to change and by looking at how nice the flowers were developed up there with the other ones I don't think I have a problem with either of those males bringing this flowering time a little bit more into reality with what we deal with. So, next one, Velvet Hammer. Man, if you take a, look, a closer look at the Velvet Hammer, and if that doesn't focus in there, you can kind of tap the screen and lightly, otherwise it'll bang the microphone. Velvet Hammer, the crystals are really well developed, and uh, when you look at the plant, the plant starts early, and it finishes upright, and that's really nice. The one thing is, it ends up, and it's a little bit on the larfy side. So if anything, I'd like to tighten it up a little bit. It also loves PM, and last year we ended up with a bud mold issue with this one. So we'll see how that one does. But as far as the buds being developed, you can see it's definitely weeks, at least two weeks ahead of the strawberry funk. So that's the Velvet Hammer. I like it. I don't know how much of that I want to carry forward. Um, next one in the line is the Mendo Dope. About the same kind of bud structure as this one. Um, PM problem with this one. I don't know if I'm going to do anything with this one 
carrying this one forward. I may just let this one just kind of go by the wayside and uh, and not move forward with it at all. Um, I've got other plans. The Nom Nom 1. Nom Nom 1, it's not anywhere near as developed as the Nom Nom 2 that we'll see in a little bit. Um, it's got a higher PM resistance than the Nom Nom 2, which is why I've kind of got it here. I'm kind of intrigued by that. We'll see how it flowers up and how it finishes up. But as we kind of run around the corner and we check out the cherry gasm, we'll take a look at the buds on both the uh, Mendo Dope and the Nom Nom 1. I don't know whether this one leans towards the glue or if this leans towards the mainline OG, but it's definitely different than the glue cherry pie leaner that I've got in the Nom Nom 2. So we'll take a look at that. I am intrigued with this one, and I'm kind of thinking, boy, if I could kind of mix that Scarlet Queen with this one and see what comes out of it. Yeah, who knows? So that one's kind of interesting. And so far, it's pretty solid. I kind of like that plant. The cherry gasm. The cherry gasm is a freaking beast. Um, PM. Boy, you know, this one's really, it, it was horrible inside, but out here, it's got it. You can see it on the lower leaves as the wind's kind of blowing the hell out of us today. But it's no worse than the others. Definitely got a lot of the cherry pie. This is totally cherry pie and totally fuel. And I'm really kind of interested in how this thing is going to, uh, how this thing is going to concentrate. It's a big plant. It fills the whole five foot wide trellis. It's all the way out here into the other trellis. It extends beyond the other side. So it does have this whole thing filled out. And when you look at the canopy, other than the spears that it's thrown, that canopy is right here around the six foot mark. So really kind of nice. It's a big plant. It's up there. That's well over seven foot up there with those top spears. So. Really kind of interested in this one. Uh, see how it runs outside. I've never grown this thing out in the greenhouse before, so pretty cool. All right, we are going to change places, and then we'll go back down the line, and we'll look at some of the others. And I'm going to relight this. More talking than smoking. All right, we'll be back in just now. All right, we're back. That was fast. Yeah, we never left. Anyway, cheese. I love this plant. If anything in my lineup is an IBL, this cheese is it. This is the authentic original UK cheese. The branches are stout. I can't bend the branches. It would support its own weight without any of the trellising. It's got the thickest stems at the base. They're just big. They're probably about a good two inches across. Strong, strong plant. It does not want to grow like this. It wants to be a tree. It doesn't want to be multi-topped. It left to itself, it grows a big spear and these big lateral branches come up and big giant colas. And I'd love to see that if I can get a solid one out of the clones that are inside. I'd love to try that, but this has so much breeding potential it's not even funny and it's clean for for lack of better term it's pm free i don't see any spots of pm so we've got the strawberry funk that has no spots of pm and the cheese and that's huge bud development it's good it's not quite as developed as the velvet hammer was but as far as density these things are a rock, so they're not going to be quite as big as the others, but next to Nom Nom, these things are just a rock. You could, you could hurt somebody if you smack them with one of these colas, so that one, solid as hell. I love that plant. It's going to be a big yielder, and I've got five of them, and they're healthy, so really, really interested to see what comes out of this. 
and I'm going to enjoy keeping this one around. Nom Nom 2. As we round this corner, we're going to take a look. I'll jump on the camera and get some macro shots of this little branch right here because this plant is an absolute freak. It is the only one of these plants that is totally filled up the entire trellis. We're talking, it's beyond the trellis on this side. It's grown under the trellis and up through the trellis from the green ice on the other side. And the canopy is pretty much across the top, kind of level right up here. It's got a big, big tall canopy. It's airy on the inside. Light is getting through. If this does what it did on the inside, all of these buds are going to be like those 25 cent gumballs to, you know, silver dollar, just those typical what you would expect from, from a Gorilla Glue number four, but really, really red like that cherry pie. And I'm interested to see what our fall colors and our fall temps are going to do to the colors on this plant because it is just a monster. And I've got one of them on the inside. Out of the clones, we're not going to go in and take a look at them. But some of these so far are PM free and some of these I've had to let go. And we'll save that story for another day. But this plant is just a beast. And if I can keep that around just even just for head stash, I'd love to keep this one around. So I'm going to grab the camera and come up and take a couple close-ups and see if I can't get in here. I don't know if you can see the crystals all over that stem, but that stem is just covered with trikes. There you go, now you can see them. And that is going to be nothing but crystals the whole way up. That whole thing's going to look like it was dipped in powdered sugar. Fantastic. This is by far, so far, the best glue cross that I have ever had. Really, really excited about this. Alright, I'm going to hand the camera back to my son who now has the camera. I'm going to relight this. Then we're going to kind of walk around the corner. And we're going to go look at the only plant that I have left from my original genetics, which is my green ice. And we've seen it. It's all kind of tweaky. But this is where I come from. When we were breeding these plants and running these plants for the first time and breeding them outside, we were selecting plants that were going to grow. Well, heck, I'll throw a picture of one of my old grows. One of the first year I was a, a well, it wasn't the first year. It's from 2013. I'll show you a picture of what my greenhouse looked like and... Then I'll show you the only plant that I have left. If you look at the right of the picture that I'm showing you, you're going to see one bud up there that's about as big as a two liter bottle. And it's not this particular one, but it's its progeny. So let's take a look at the green ice. So far advanced in bud structure as anybody else. Typic totally an Afghani hash plant looking. The terps on this thing right now pinene, menthol, earth, a hint of berries coming from that blueberry that I had that uh, kind of is when I started having issues with this. But look at the bud structure. Big spears. That's all going to be cola. 
probably the size of a pop bottle or a beer can. It didn't want to be grown like this. It wanted to be grown like that picture. Those, pl those plants in that picture in that other greenhouse, they're about five foot, six foot tall, untopped. They just grew like that with like this much cola and then four or five laterals that just came up. Total head stash. Kind of fun to play with. One part fun, one part pain in the ass. All right, that's your main greenhouse walkthrough. It's kicking. But when it came right down to the final decision, I decided to keep two of the Scarlet Queens. That one over there is starting to get some of those orange citrus and cherry terps. And this is the one that is really, really strong. So I have kept them both. That looks like pollen. Yes, I have pollinated the front half of both of these. The pollination project will continue there in the main greenhouse later tonight. And you will see that next week as well as that IMO collection. See if we can't get another really, really good dose. Because I want to go out and uh, inoculate that compost pile with it. So, busy week next week as well. Alright guys, you know what to do. Like, share, comment, subscribe. I'm the Rascal Farmer. We'll catch you guys right back here next time in the No-Till Lab.